In this PowerPoint, you'll find the solutions to the Clausius Clapeyron practice problems given out in class on February 5th, 2015. In this first problem, you were asked to find the enthalpy of vaporization of dichloromethane given the best fit line for a plot of the natural log of vapor pressure versus the inverse of temperature. The best fit line fits the linear form of the clausius clapeyron equation, where y equals mx plus b. In this form, y is equivalent to the natural log of the vapor pressure, x is equal to the inverse of the temperature, the slope is equal to the negative of the enthalpy of vaporization divided by r, the ideal gas constant, and b equals the natural log of beta. In the best fit line we're given as part of the problem, the slope is equal to negative 3,805. From the linear form, we know that the slope is also equal to the negative of the enthalpy of vaporization divided by the ideal gas constant, R. We can substitute what we know into this equation so that the negative of 3,805, the slope from the equation, is equal to the negative of the enthalpy of vaporization divided by 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole. We multiply both sides by 8.314 to get 31,635 joules per mole. Divide this by 1,000 to get 31.63 kilojoules per mole. In the second problem, we're asked what temperature in degrees Celsius will the vapor pressure of ethanol be 75 millimeters of mercury if the vapor pressure is 100 millimeters of mercury at 34.9 degrees Celsius. We're also given the enthalpy of vaporization for ethanol as 39.3 kilojoules per mole. This fits the two-point form of the clausius clapeyron equation. We're given a pressure point, 75 millimeters of mercury, and asked to find the temperature that corresponds to this vapor pressure. Our second pressure and temperature corresponds to 100 millimeters of mercury and 34.9 degrees Celsius. All of our temperatures must be in units of Kelvin, so we add 273.15 to our degrees Celsius for the second temperature to get 308.05 Kelvin. The enthalpy of vaporization is given as 39.3 kilojoules per mole. All of our enthalpies should be in joules per mole, so we convert this to joules by multiplying by 1,000 to give us 39.3 times 10 to the third joules per mole. R is the ideal gas constant at 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. We substitute all of these into the two-point form of the clausius clapeyron equation as shown here. Now we simplify wherever we can. 100 divided by 75 gives us 1.3333 and so on. Negative 39.3 times 10 to the third divided by 8.314 gives us negative 4,726.96656 Kelvin. Joules per mole cancel out. 1 divided by 308.05 Kelvin gives us 0 0.00324626 Kelvin to the negative 1. We take the natural log of 1.333 and that gives us 0 0.287682. We start simplifying by dividing both sides by negative 4,726. This gives us on the right-hand side just the expression in parentheses. On the left-hand side, we have 0 0.287682 divided by negative 4,726.96656. We simplify the left-hand side to give us negative 0 0.00006086 Kelvin to the negative 1. Now we want to get T1, our unknown, all by itself on one side. To start this process, let's actually get both of the known values on the left-hand side. We'll subtract 0 0.00324626 from each side. 
This leaves us with negative 1 over t1 on the right, and we can condense the subtraction on the left to get 0 0.00330786. Now we want to get t1 out of the denominator. We're going to multiply both sides by negative t1. This cancels out the negative on the left-hand side because a negative times a negative gives you a positive. On the right-hand side, the t1 terms actually cancel out, leaving us, leaving us with just 1. We now want to get t1 by itself, so we divide both sides by 0 0.00307086. And we now have t1 is equal to the inverse, or 1 divided by that number, which gives us 302.381 Kelvin. We want our final answer in units of degrees Celsius, so we subtract 273.15 to give us 229.231 degrees Celsius. For significant figures, we'll go for the same number of digits as we have in our other temperature, 34.9 degrees Celsius. We have one place past the decimal, three significant figures there, so we'll round our answer to three significant figures or one place past the decimal, 29.2 degrees Celsius. In the third problem, we're asked to find the vapor pressure of propane at negative 25 degrees Celsius. Given the normal boiling point is negative 42 degrees Celsius, and the heat of vaporization is 19.04 kilojoules per mole. Again, we'll use this two-point form of the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. We'll set the first pressure and temperature equal to the normal boiling point. Normal boiling point assumes that the vapor pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. Whenever you see this term normal boiling point, assume 760 millimeters of mercury for the associated vapor pressure. The temperature, negative 42.0 degrees Celsius, has to be converted to Kelvin, so we add 273.15. Our enthalpy of vaporization is 19.04 kilojoules per mole. We convert to joules per mole by multiplying by 1,000 joules per 1 kilojoule. R is equal to 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And our second temperature is negative 25 degrees Celsius, converted to Kelvin by adding 273.15. Finally, we're solving for P2. We can substitute all of this information into our two-point form of the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. It gives us this. We want to simplify this as much as we can. On the right-hand side, we can simplify all of this math to give us one number, 0 0.6787309737. Make sure you follow the correct order of operations on your calculator to get this value. On the left-hand side, we need to get rid of that natural log. To do this, we can raise everything to the base e. Remember that the natural log of x raised to the base e is simply x. We can apply this to our equation, and what it will do is cancel out the natural log on the left-hand side, leaving us with the variable p2 divided by 760 on the left, equal to e raised to the 0 0.6787309730973 exponent. You can enter this right-hand side into your calculator, and it will give you 1.971374. We can now isolate P2 by multiplying both sides by 760 millimeters of mercury. It cancels out on the left. And it leaves us with P2 equals 1,498.2 millimeters of mercury on the right. We round to three significant figures to match the least number of significant figures in our problem, 1.50 times 10 to the third millimeters of mercury. For problem four, we're asked to find the vapor pressure of ethanol at 15 degrees Celsius. Given the normal boiling point of ethanol of 78.4 degrees Celsius and a heat of vaporization of 38.56 kilojoules per mole. Again, we use the two point form of the Clausius Clapeyron equation. Our first data point will be the normal boiling point of ethanol, 760 millimeters of mercury, and 78.4 degrees Celsius. 
We convert our temperature into Kelvin by adding 273.15. Our enthalpy of vaporization is 38.56 kilojoules per mole. We convert this to joules per mole by multiplying by 1,000 joules per one kilojoule. R is the ideal gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Our second temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, converted to Kelvin by adding 273.15. And finally, we're solving for P2. We substitute all of this data into the two-point form of the Clausius-Clapeyron equation, and it gives us this expression. We simplify on the right-hand side using our calculator, and it gives us negative 2.90275-6036. Again, we raise everything to the base E to isolate X and get rid of our natural log. The natural log on the left-hand side will cancel out, leaving us with just the ratio of P2 divided by 760 millimeters of mercury. On the right-hand side, we have E raised to the negative 2.90275-6036. We can do this on our calculator, and it gives us 0 0.0548-71783. If we multiply both sides by 760, we get rid of the denominator on the left, and we end up with a P2 value of 41.70255 millimeters of mercury. We round this to two significant figures to match the least number of significant figures in our calculation in our measurements of 15 degrees Celsius. This is 42 millimeters of mercury for the final answer. In the fifth problem, we're asked to find the temperature that benzene boils when the external pressure is 445 torr. We're given the heat of vaporization as 30.72 kilojoules per mole and told that the normal boiling point of benzene is 80.1 degrees Celsius. We're going to use the two-point form of the Clausius-Clapeyron equation again. This time, we're going to set our first data point as equal to 445 torr, and we're going to solve for T1. Our second data point then will be the normal boiling point with a vapor pressure of 760 torr and a temperature of 80.1 degrees Celsius. We'll convert this to Kelvin by adding 273.15. Our enthalpy of vaporization is 30.72 kilojoules per mole. We'll convert this to joules per mole by multiplying by 1,000 joules per one kilojoule. R, of course, is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. We substitute all of this into the two-point form to give us this expression. Now we simplify as much as we can. On the left-hand side, the ratio of 760 divided by 445 gives us 1.70786516. Negative 30.72 times 10 to the third divided by 8.314 gives us negative 3,694.972336 Kelvin. Joules per mole cancel out. And 1 divided by 353.25 Kelvin gives us 0 0.00283086 Kelvin to the negative 1. We take the natural log on the left-hand side, and we get 0 0.5352441. We can then divide both sides by negative 3,694.972336. It leaves us on the right-hand side with just the expression in parentheses. We do the division on the left, and it gives us negative 0 0.0001448578 Kelvin to the negative 1. Now we want to get our variable T1 all by itself. The first step in this process is to get the variable 1 over T1 by itself. To do this, we'll subtract 0 0.00283086 from each side. This will give us negative 1 over T1 on the right side by itself. If we combine the subtraction on the left, we get negative 0.00297574 Kelvin to the negative 1. We can multiply both sides by negative T1 to get T1 out of the denominator on the right. It cancels out on the right, and it gives us 
0.00297514 times T1 on the left. The negatives cancel out on each side. All of this is equal to 1 on the right. We want to get T1 by itself, so we divide both sides by 0.00297514, and it gives us 336.0538 Kelvin. We subtract 273.15 to get the temperature in degrees Celsius, and we round to three significant figures to match the least number of significant figures in the measurements we're given in the problem. This is 62.9 degrees Celsius. In our last problem, we're asked to find the boiling point of water on top of Mount Everest, given that the average atmospheric pressure there is 0.32 atmospheres. We're also told that the heat of vaporization for water is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. Again, we'll use the two-point form of the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. Our first data point will be on top of Mount Everest, the vapor pressure of 0.32 atmospheres, and our unknown boiling point temperature. While we're not given specifics for the second vapor pressure and temperature, it's assumed that we know the normal boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, and the vapor pressure is one atmosphere. You could convert the atmospheres to Tor in order to do this problem, but it's not necessary. Because pressures are written as a ratio, the units will cancel out, and we can keep them in atmospheres. We do have to convert the temperatures to Kelvin by adding 273.15. Enthalpy of vaporization is 40.7 kilojoules per mole, converted to joules by multiplying by 1,000 joules per 1 kilojoule. R is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. We substitute this into our equation to give us this. Now we simplify where we can. On the left, 1 divided by 0.32 gives us 3.125. On the right, negative 40.7 times 10 to the third divided by 8.314 gives us negative 4,895.357229 Kelvin. 1 divided by 373.15 Kelvin is 0.00267987 Kelvin to the negative 1. We take the natural log of 3.125 on the left, and it gives us 1.13943432833. We divide each side by negative 4895.357229 Kelvin, cancels out on the right, and on the left, it gives us negative 0.00023275 Kelvin to the negative 1. Now we want to get T1 by itself. The first step is to subtract 0.00267987 from each side. On the left, this gives us negative 0.00232758 minus that 0.00267987. This combines to give us negative 0.00291264 Kelvin to the negative 1. To get T1 out of the denominator, we're going to multiply both sides by negative T1. The negatives cancel out on each side. On the right-hand side, T1 cancels out in the denominator, leaving us with just 1. On the left-hand side, we get 0.00291264 times T1. We can get T1 by itself now simply by dividing each side by that 0.00291246, and this gives us 343.3305 Kelvin. We subtract 273.15 to convert this into degrees Celsius, and we round to the least number of significant figures we're given in measurements in the problem. That's 0 0.32, which has two significant figures, so we'll round to two significant figures for our answer, 70 degrees Celsius.